A privately built spacecraft is transmitting signals from the moon after making the first successful landing from the US in more than half a century. The uncrewed Nova Sea lander, nicknamed Odysseus, went dark as it made its final descent from lunar orbit. There were some tense moments at Mission Control as the team awaited a signal from the antennas of the 4.3 metre spacecraft. The confirmation? was met with celebrations. Welcome to the moon. Houston, Odysseus has found his new home. What a triumph. Odysseus has taken the moon. This feat is a giant leap forward for all of humanity. Well, the commercial craft launched from Florida a week ago. This successful mission is the second time a U.S. aerospace firm has tried to land on the lunar surface this year. The first attempt by astrobiotic technology failed due to a fuel leak. The company behind this one, well, it's called Intuitive Machines. Odysseus blasted off, carrying instruments from NASA and other clients to gather data about the moon. Before reaching lunar orbit, the six-legged spacecraft sent images of Earth during its one million kilometre journey. We constructed six scientific instruments from NASA that we're paying intuitive machines to take down to the surface of the moon and operate for us and get us our data back. And those instruments are going to measure things like um, the uh, when you land on the moon, um, how do your engines blow that abrasive lunar dust around? In effect, are you sandblasting the surface? We're testing advanced communication technology so that we're very accurate in knowing where we land on the moon. Well, NASA's private sector program is called the Commercial Lunar Payload Services Initiative. It aims to spur on a new economy to support future missions and perhaps a permanent base on the moon. Fourteen American companies have been signed up for contracts worth almost $4 billion through to 2028. It all forms part of Project Artemis. Eventually, it is hoped to return humans to the lunar surface after the Apollo program closed in 1972. International partners are also involved and Australia has played a part. NASA wanted the commercial operators to use commercial partners for their communications rather than using the deep space network. So they built up a network of antennas around the world. And here in Australia, we had the fantastic dish. It's Murian Parks Radio Telescope right there in New South Wales to be able to support that communication, receiving data from the spacecraft. And of course, here in Canberra, our tracking station is supporting Lunar Node 1, which is an interesting NASA experiment to build up a GPS-like communication system around the moon for future robotic and human missions. So with Touchdown on the Moon completed, the area that scientists want to explore is rugged. This map shows the northern half of the elusive lunar South Pole region. They are concentrating on a site indicated by that little red star at the top there. Success here could offer humanity's first glimpse of an area that scientists believe has huge potential for future exploration. Well, that is because some craters are in permanent shadow as you can see here, uh, they have low temperatures and that means they could harbour water ice. The South Pole, we think, from based on robotic probes in orbit, there's a good chance that there's actually ice under the surface of the soil at the South Pole in places which have not seen sunlight for hundreds of millions or even billions of years.